All right, everybody, welcome to the Lockdown Avalanche podcast. On today's episode, we know Nathan McKinnon is going to be the highest pay- paid player this season. Next year, it will be Austin Matthews. Could in the future, could it be Kale McCarr when he is due for a new contract? We will discuss new episode of Locked On Avalanche coming at you. Your Locked On Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome to the Locked On Avalanche Podcast. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Chris Maselli. With me, as always, is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom. Kyle Sullivan, thank you for tuning in and making it your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. Make sure to follow us on our social media outlets, L-O-P-N underscore Avalanche on Twitter X, Locked on Avalanche on Instagram. Questions, comments, concerns, and opinions, Locked on Avalanche at gmail.com. And follow us on our YouTube channel over on YouTube. Hit subscribe, get notified when a new show goes live. Make sure to subscribe to our subtext as well. Great conversations going on over there, especially about yesterday's episode. Uh, subscribe to that link is in the show notes below. When you do you uh, and subscribe, you chat with Kyle and I one-on-one, uh, you see our rundown. We will get to the remaining, um, 10 lessons that the NHL could learn from that athletic article. <clears throat> we'll get to those, um, in the next segment, but where we're going to start today, sir, is, uh, how we let off the show and, yeah, we didn't really talk about it that Austin Matthews signed that four year extension with Toronto that will make him the highest paid player after this season. Nathan McKinnon will have that uh, title for exactly one year. Um, and then it goes to Austin Matthews. And I think this is going to be a running thing for the NHL as you're just constantly going to be one up. I think, you know, the, the, the Connor McDavid holding that title for as long as he did probably won't last as long you know you're not going to get that as much anymore um because number one the salary cap is going up and you have a lot of really good players that are going to take advantage of that so i'll be interested to see how long austin matthews holds on to it for which what's he getting 14 2 i think it was i believe so um so you know that's about one one point five more 1.6 more than uh about one and a half more than what nathan's getting right yeah yeah i'm i was homeschooled so let's not do that right now (laughs) um so i you know kale mccarr i think he's that next like right now he's on what looks like a steal of a deal even though while he's making nine million dollars and you know his contract is not that far away a, a new one for him so um i have free agents for the next handful of seasons um and we'll go through so like let's see so next year um I, I, these are just contracts um in order of you know what what the cap hit is for their last year so stamkos leads the way there i don't really see anybody on here that i think could really break the bank in terms of beating um matthews I think it's when you get to the Makar um, year, which is in 2026. This is a crazy, crazy unrestricted free agent uh, list here, man. Crazy. So you have Connor and, McDavid right off the bat. <laughs> he's he's available. And when you were talking about <clears throat> Connor McDavid, Nathan McKinnon, and Austin Matthews, you know, kind of going back and forth, they're always at the top of the list every year mm-hmm. when you're talking about who's actually the better player in the NHL. They go back and forth. They trade it back and forth. Hardware goes left and right. Covers yep. of NHL games go left and right between everybody but Nathan McKinnon. And then Nathan McKinnon is the highest play, paid player right now. Austin will be next year. Connor McDavid, his deal's coming up. And the ESPN deal, the salary cap, the money is going up in the NHL. Will Kale McCarr jump into the conversation which is going to be interesting because Connor mcdavid that deal would he want to continue staying in edmonton do the rumors about him going to la and the lights and the glitz and the glamour does does he get 15 million does he get 16 million oh i think he could easily get 15 million yeah 
And then, uh, yeah, but if, if not from Edmonton, somewhere, yeah. It, if you currently the highest paid defenseman in the league right now, you got mm-hmm. Eric Carlson he's sitting around 11 million. Okay, you get the Drew Doughty contract that's still the albatross in LA, as previously mentioned, but like. I can, yeah, I can see Kale, and this is also, does he touch that 100 point mark in between now and that 2026 that you mentioned when that deal comes up? Because like Zach Rowinski is third, and he's like at 9.5 and a bunch of like 5.8333. So <laughs> like, there's a yeah. gap between two and three, but Kale will take the number one spot by 2026. But is it enough well, to go into the stratosphere of the Austin Matthews, Seth McKinnon, and Connor McDavid's? So let's see. So McDavid, his the last year of his deal is the 25-26 season. Um, so going into the 26-27 is when he's a free agent. So, yeah, I mean, I, he he's going to absolutely cash in, right? Absolutely cash in, I think, without, without a doubt. Um, McCarr. So maybe this website that I that I have is is not correct here. They have in the 26 season, McCarr's a free agent. According to Cat Friendly, it's in the 27, 28 season. So let's see. 23. Yeah. I'm trying to let's see. So he's gonna have a year. So McDavid will be under contract for, for one year. While McCarr still has uh, his last year on his current deal left, I believe. Yes, he will. So that's where it could get interesting because it's going to be McDavid. McDavid mm-hmm. is going to have that that title back. I can almost guarantee it. And then you'll have to look at Kale, Kale McCarr will be playing his final year on this nine million. So you know what the number is going to be. You know, we still have a handful of seasons to go. If if this thing plays out the way we all expect it to, and Kale McCarr just keeps putting up unbelievable numbers, keeps pulling in hardware, maybe wins another cup. The following, like, could could then Connor McDavid only hold that title again for one season? It's possible. I mean, and again, the cap keeps going up. And here's the other part of it too: is Kale McCarr at that time is unrestricted. So the same question we're asking about Connor McDavid. Uh, there's going to be some team out there that will throw a ridiculous amount of money at him, and it'll be up to him. Do I want to stay with Edmonton or go maybe somewhere that's better while making a ton of money? The same question is going to be in Kale McCarr's lap. And the be- the the big question right now, you we talked about Nathan McKinnon also being up there. Guess what? He's a member of the Colorado Avalanche. You can't mm-hmm. have number one if that's Kale McCarr being up there in the 15-16, and Nathan McKinnon also on your payroll, you can't have like two. That's a lot. So what's the rest of the team going to look like? Are you going to be the LA Kings, the the Minnesota Wild with those two beefy contracts that they just got done buying out? Is that the future of the Colorado Avalanche? With the management with McFarlane and Sackick, you don't think they would be – looking at that down the road uh, they know this is coming what do you well, do in that situation <clears throat> mm, i don't know i mean it's all gonna depend on what the cap is but you you look at you know miko rantanen's got to get done mm-hmm. but before any of that right so um it, it's it's kind of amazing how these two teams are kind of in the same boat right now with superstars because yeah miko rantanen has this year and next year and then his contract is up so you're going to have three massive contracts and then other guys too that got to get paid. Obviously, Devon Taves has got to get paid. That's going to go up if he stays with Colorado. You know, Colorado just wants this, this salary cap to go up and up and up and up so they can yeah. sign all this. But you look at um, Edmonton and it's the same because Dreisaitl is up the year before McDavid. So how does that play out? Because he's going to make a ton of money. And then the very next year, they have to sign McDavid for a ton of money. So, may, like, I know we're, we're way down the road here, but this is stuff I'm, I can guarantee you the teams are thinking about right now. Maybe not at, at the front, forefront of their, their, uh, you know, their, their decision making right now, but it's in their minds. It is in their minds for Edmonton and definitely for the Avalanche because, yeah, like, 
you're you're gonna see what McDavid's making. You're gonna see what Drysaddle's making. You're, g- you're gonna pay Miko, and then Mc- McCarr is kind of like the last one of those guys of, the, of just that group of guys, and he's gonna be in that mix and maybe over all of them. So yeah, we're saying, oh, is, is uh, Mc- McDavid gonna get 15? I think without a doubt. So then, are we saying Kale McCarr? If the Avalanche want to make him the highest player, has got to go to 15, 5, 16. Crazy. Even even at 14, 13, you have Nathan McKinnon and Kale McCarr and the X variable with Miko Rantanen. You you have so much money tied up in those three players. I just don't the, know if man, yeah. It is puts, there is there enough to go around? Are they going to have to to talk to him and just be like, "Look, guys, like you'll get paid. You'll all get minimally ten, right?" I mean, Miko's right on the verge of that. Makara's at nine. So you know what? You know what they should do, man. Remember what Minnesota did? <clears throat> who who the two guys? The Suter and Parise and Parise didn't they have the same exact contract? I think they had the same exact like to, to the to the it's, dollar. Yeah, yeah it I'm sounds almost about right. I'm almost certain they were they were eight years and whatever the number was. Make all three of them twelve six of, of what what uh, Nathan McKinnon is getting. Like all three of them the same amount. Let's go because that's still that's probably going to be a very good deal. So you in, got in, third- in for the years ahead when the cap keeps going up. Yeah, relatively thirty-seven million dollars wrapped up in three guys, two forwards and a defenseman. Top five, uh, each position. Number That's, one for a defenseman, probably the second best at the other position, and probably the top five at, at, for the Miko position. Contrary, yeah. before Kale McCarr, that's what this team looked like before Bednar arrived. What do you mean that? Nathan McKinnon, Miko Ranton, and there was Landis Gog at the time, but that was about it. Mm-hmm. You didn't have the beefy like depth. We had the Borks, Gabe and Renee, and all the names that we were we have talked about, like the Everydayers, our yeah. favorite Avalanche players. We don't talk about like and Vergetto and yeah. Are we about to go back to those days just to keep <laughs> like? Because I don't know. I mean, by then the salary cap should we'll have sixty million dollars give or take, to play with for the rest of the team. And with the way the NHL is getting competitive and a lot of parity in the league, will the Avalanche be able to keep up? It remains to be seen. It's going to be... Uh, and, and the thing with Kale McCarr is it It seemed like the deal that he's currently under was relatively easy for him to just say, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll t- that's a fine number for me. It, he doesn't strike you as the person to go back and forth but he's he's going to be in a different position yep. in in four year or whatever he's got left in that four or five years. He's got hardware to cover if he wants to. Yeah, he can force the issue. Doesn't seem like he did with this contract, even though he knew it was, it, his 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 number jumped incredibly. Um, but for the next one, if he wants to play hardball, he's going to be in a very good, good position to do that. It doesn't seem like that's his makeup, but like just saying, he could if he wants to or. If the abs come to him and do what I'm thinking here in the 12.6 for everybody, you kind of feel like Kale McCarr would be like, yeah, that's that's fine. That's a three and a half million uh jump uh for me per year. And I still play on the avalanche. I'm still playing with Meek, I'm still playing with Nate, I'm still playing with all these guys, still play in a great situation. I, I just kind of get the vibe that he would say he wouldn't say no to that. But then I don't know. <clears throat> Devil's advocate, this is where I'm the Calgary Flames and I'm setting my team up for that very moment mm-hmm. where I can pay a Kale McCarr $16 million when that contract yeah. comes up. And you say, hey, I know it's going back for a discount. Come home, buddy. Yeah, I mean, there's that and the Avs will have an extra year that they can give him. So they always have that chip. It'll be it'll be it'll be fun to watch. It'll be yeah. really really fun to see see how this all pans out. That's years down the road, uh, but we will see. We were talking about all this salary cap stuff. Those are a couple things on this athletic article that we are going to finish up um, about the ten lessons that they can, they can learn from other sports. So we're going to jump into that right after we hear from FanDuel, and you can get ready for the NFL season with 
Incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers, all you got to do is bet $5 and you get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. And all customers, this is everybody, if you bet $5, you will get $100 off the NFL Sunday ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. Those are some pretty good deals right now going on at FanDuel. So it's the best time to join. Download the app. It's easy. It's super easy to use and secure. Everything you can bet on from spreads to player props and more. So go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you don't want to miss. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. All right, let's uh, hop back into this athletic article, which uh, we did part one of this on uh, Monday's episode. Uh, we got through a few of them, and there's a handful to go. Like I said, the the you know talking about Kale McCarr and all the salary cap stuff, and that's kind of where we left off. Um, they say more flexibility with the salary cap, and they kind of compare that to the NBA. Um, you know, they mentioned. With, with you know the the cap circumvention if you want to call it with LTIR and things like that NHL has a, a hard salary cap cannot go over it no ifs ands or buts you can in the playoffs but during the regular season you can't um and they they talk about the NBA which apparently has a a soft salary cap so it so the way that they word it here is um, creates more opportunities for teams to make moves by shifting things around and using a bevy of exceptions. There's a fine line to this, and the NBA has probably gone too far with some of its cap exemptions. Um, some of that can take away from the fan experience because it can get so complicated and hard to follow, but the NHL can still grow uh, without going full NBA. So it seems like the NBA has a system that's, I don't want to say convoluted, but you can what your team looks like today, like or the day before the playoffs, is not what they can look like on day one of the playoffs. Um, I think there is a, a, a line here that the NHL maybe can navigate. I don't know what that is, uh, but do, do you like? You think there needs to be some changes here? I'll, I'll ask you. I'll ask it that way. I would say if the league was already growing and very healthy and in a which it is to a point. But there is so much improvement to be made. What they're doing with this gradual increase over time, I think, works. I think the hard cap works. Mm -hmm. And I think how things are in the playoffs, I kind of enjoy it. It's comical at times with how you see teams just magically get healed as soon as the season's over. <laughs> but I honestly, I think it keeps the checks and balances in play because the NBA can get away with it because they make a ton of money. Mm. NHL's not there yet. We're still recovering from the lockouts and the bubbles. The NHL needs to heal a little bit before they can get a little fun and free. So it kind of bleeds into the next one, which I want to bring in here now. And it says implement a designated player rule. They compare it to Major League Soccer. Um and what this is, it said the rules implemented to help Major League Soccer in a competitive international football market, which is not, you know, that's not the problem for the NHL. But I get why the why MLS would do this. So teams are allowed to spend over the cap to bring in three big name players from David Beckham to more recently Lionel Messi. Um, it helped give a competitive edge to the team by adding players and adding more legitimacy to the league. So again, that's not a problem for the NHL because that this this is a league where everybody wants to come play. So I get why soccer could do that, but they go on to say like you could implement this in some way. Maybe not three players. Three players is a little bit ridiculous, but for for the NHL it would be. But maybe getting one player um, that that you're allowed to go over with, saying over the cap. Um, or I want to read what they say here. Um, but maybe allowing one or two players per team would promote more player movement along the elite tier to spice things up and drive interest. Uh, if it's two players, maybe there could be more stipulations with only one designation for UFA and one has to be for a drafted player. And then they say with this rule, a team like the Buffalo Sabres could find its two de designated players by extending franchise player Rasmus Dahlin uh, to a contract that's above the cap next summer and sway 
Austin Matthews to join if say if, uh, you know Toronto wasn't in a, a fight but it it would drive interest without a doubt and you have to ask the question do you want do you want that or not do you want to have like kind of a couple like moves going on here and there and having these marquee players going to a team just for a playoff run um or or no it would get viewers in and that's where the nhl is right now do you want do you want to sacrifice like you know the i you, you know what i'm I, trying to say here like, i, it, I know i i see how this article is shaping it up and what they're pre- presenting but without messing up how the league already is mm-hmm. and having like you can have like a Zegers join your team in the playoffs like that's cute and everything what should happen and you could pay the player however much you need it's a gamble it's a risk reward well it's but not if, you pay him how much you need. like he still has a contract so just be that contract it's you're paying an alumni Pittsburgh can mm. go get Yager <laughs> Buffalo could go get Dominic Hasek. Right. It might pay off. It might not. But you you want to talk about interest in something new and something different? Mm-hmm. If you wore the sweater before and you're not currently signed to a team, come on in. Yeah. Because uh, I think mm-hmm. if you're asking like Austin Matthews to, if, to join because they missed the playoffs, you could join. I, I think that takes a lot of the fun out of the regular season. Because you well, could just you could just yeah, coast yeah. and be like, well, it doesn't matter. They're going to pick me up in the in the postseason. Well, I really don't have to push it that much. But it doesn't have to be for the postseason. Like it, it could be for the regular season. Like if if you knew Austin Matthews, like if this was this is his last year, he didn't sign that extension. He and this is his last year. Uh, you could bring him in now and play the entire season for you. But his number wouldn't matter because you get that one player that could be. Uh, going into the following year, that's a UFA. You can bring him in; doesn't count against your cap. Yeah. So I, you, I mean, you could do it beginning of the season. There might be some some rules to put in, in, implement for uh, postseason, but for like you know, think Lionel Messi. They brought him at the beginning. I don't, was it the beginning of the season they brought him? In? It was I, middle. I, they were getting ready for a friendly. Is, I guess makes uh, no sense to me. A team yeah. from mine back home. They were yeah. getting ready for a friendly. So, but but it would just like you you would have almost like a franchise tag player. You know what I mean? In in a way that you bring them in, they're going to be a UFA the following year. Uh, they don't count against your cap. It would make things interesting. Yeah, would make things interesting. I I, w- I would think so, if yeah, if the league had some international competition where you could pull in players that are making a name somewhere else, and you could bring them in. Mm-hmm. I I just feel like if you're playing around with players and current roster nhl guys in that regard it makes it feel a little bit more like a sideshow right and that's what you don't want yeah i I don't want that um and then you know what we're talking about right now is the next one which is don't be beholden to the way it's always been which they compare that to major league baseball saying uh, nobody holds on to its history like major league baseball but look what they did they yeah. finally changed things up this year with the pitch clock, um, so many mound visits, no shift, ghost um, runner, and extra innings. Yeah, like they, they they really did this massive overhaul, and the returns on it seem like it's working like a charm. So the NHL they love their history too, um, you know, and they've changed things out through through the through the years. Um, but do you feel like there needs to be some? massive overhauls with kind of some things we've been talking about on today's show and yesterday's show um just so you you don't just say like well that's not the way we've we've done it in the past so we have to keep even with the nfl the nfl going to 17 game uh, 17 game schedule which i mean it hasn't been i think it wasn't always 16 games but doing something like that in, in today's day and age and adding more games is really kind of you're running a, a, a big risk there because people love records and they're like, oh, that dilutes records and things like that. But the NFL is just like, no, we're doing it. It's smart because it's a money machine. So you get an extra week of money like that. Come on. So I would say, yes, this is a great, wonderful thing. The NHL should practice, which they should. They should try and be different because they need to be different. 
But also, yeah. this is also the same league that gave us the glow puck three on three overtime. Like when they get yeah. creative, it's dumb. <laughs> so I well, would love for them to yeah. get creative, but yeah. Remember when they had the Marvel, the Stan Lee superheroes for the All Star game? Yes, yes, yeah. Th it's, that was see, and th and that's the thing with sports. It's either it's a really good idea, or man, that falls flat. But you mentioned the, the the Marvel thing, and that was that was like that was in the nineties, wasn't it? That was a long was time like, ago. I think two thousand. Yeah, and it, so like you have you have that, but the thing that they did last year with the big city greens, that was amazing. That was good. Like that, what that's entertaining for kids. It gets kids yep. involved. It's a different way to watch the game for kids. Um, and the NFL has done that with Nickelodeon when the, you oh. know that. So like that's what you, the NHL needs to do. They need yeah. to they need to keep going down that route because my kids still talk about that big city greens game. It's it, like so so there is hits and misses basically, yeah. um, where they bring up the oh for Major League Baseball the Field of Dreams game, right? Well, uh, we like, got yeah we got the Lake Tahoe's we haven't done right. a Mystery Alaska game yet. No, which that that would be great. Um, it's just like they say in the article, like lean into it more. Lean into it more. It, you're, there's going to be some misses. The All Star Game. Why, why don't you do that? Get rid of the All Star Game. Nobody wants it. Be the first league to get rid of the All. The players don't want it. The fans don't want it. Name guys All Stars. Have a vote for it because I know there's like some contract stipulations. If you if you become an All Star, you get a bonus or something like that for some players. Still name All Stars. We don't need to play the game anymore. Yeah, be that yeah. first league that takes that leap because you the get, NFL failed at it. The NFL should have done it years ago with the Pro Bowl, and they didn't. And you get penalized if you don't. You get money taken away if you which don't show is up. Dumb, which is so dumb. They need to recognize it's just it's just boring. Um, implement more advanced technology. Um, basically, they, they kind of talk about tennis um, and you know the the Hawkeye technology as mm -hmm. they call it. Yeah, you know I. Excuse me. I I am kind of the on the camp of during the regular season. I'm okay with human error. It, we, you know, if there's a bad call, whether it goes against, some are going to go for you, some are not going to go for you. I like that element of being able to have a podcast and come sit down with you and argue about a call that didn't go the Avalanche way because the ref stunk that day. I like that. I don't like that in the playoffs. Yeah. I am completely fine if you want to use advanced technology for the playoffs because we want to all get that right. Um, so one thing that I don't know why they haven't used that yet is, is some tracking device where it knows if it's gone over the line and there is the sliverest of daylight. Um, you can have that technology tomorrow and they won't do it. Um, it bothers me the most bringing up that point when they show that graphic of look, we could track the players and it's everybody's name on the ice at once. Everybody going around. <laughs> You're like, oh, that's amazing. But yeah. we can't track the puck going over the line. No, you can tell me where the, it, my player is at all times and how fast they're going and the probability of winning this face off. But when it comes to the, the point of the game technology, forget about it. It's like the Flintstones. We still have birds. <laughs> rock. Yeah. I mean, it's, to me, that's in, in the article, they, they kind of say some things with like offsides, being able to call offsides. But I feel like you have that technology. I feel like, you know, that those are going to be like, you know, minuscule milliseconds. And if we're, I mean, all right. <laughs> we, we've been on the bad end of that. Gabe Landeskog, mm -hmm. San Jose Sharks. I have no idea what you're talking and, about. And and if we're if we're gonna have those like mil milliseconds of we're gonna call reverse it on mill hey, that happens. I don't feel like you need it for uh you know for for offsides. I think a hundred percent you need it for goals. Yeah. You, th because that it like that is the the most important aspect of the game is your team scoring goals and they are you know when you get one they are so valuable. And if that gets turned around for an iffy call, it could kill your game, obviously. 
I, I don't understand why sometimes. it's not part of the game as it is right don't now. Know. Don't know. Um, two more. One is lean in on data and promote it publicly. They basically list every other sport uh, that does it. Um, I, the, the, what I'll say from this is their their main gripe here is getting other fans to care about other teams. And we kind of said this yesterday with like the if they had a uh, a red zone type of thing. That's just mm-hmm. for watching the game. Um, I, I I gave up fantasy sports. Uh, years ago and i was never a smoker but i'm assuming that's what the feeling is like when you quit smoking is giving up fantasy sports because uh, it's just a wonderful feeling not to have that i have to you know uh, check in on my team day in and day out it's a freeing experience and i really crippling chris it's crippling yeah i implore everybody to at least give it a try um (laughs) but i you know fantasy is still very large it just doesn't seem to be that big in hockey so like you have to really like your, your average NFL fan will go play a, a NFL fantasy where people that really don't pay attention to hockey are not going to go seek out and, and want to go play hockey. But if you or do play hockey a fantasy, but some of these people that want to do baseball and specifically baseball and NFL are because they're just analytic freaks and they just like numbers and stuff like that. And if you can promote that more, you get those people to come in and take part in fantasy sports. And then they'll watch random games because their guy is playing in a game that's a national television. So I'll sit and watch it. But you don't really see the league promoting uh, fantasy all that much. It's a tough sell. And it, I have friends that will, hockey fans, that mm-hmm. will have three fantasy football teams and not keep a fantasy hockey team three weeks into the season. Oh, yeah. Right. They just give up on it because right. it's it. There's no appeal. There's no really no point. And it, you just kind of give up on it. Like you'll keep a fantasy baseball and basketball team much longer than you will hockey because you're like, oh, yeah, I got to set a lineup this night. Who's playing? Do I? And it's just by the time you get halfway down the roster, you're like, forget about it. Yeah. No, I mean, that that's going to be a tough sell and, and something that is going to take a while to really get people on board for, but can be done. Last one, and I really like this one, allow fresh voices to make their imprint on the game. They compare this to the NFL, and how they compare it to the NFL is you owe, and they're 100% right, you always hear of uh, a, a young, fresh head coach that got a job because he's, you know, the the he has this incredible new way to run an offense or run a defense or – He's, you know, this offensive guru and stuff like that. And they give them chances to be head coaches. Where in the NHL, it's just this guy got fired. Tomorrow he's hired by another team. Another guy got fired. He's hired. It is a revolving door of coaches. And you don't get those, uh, you know, young masterminds getting an opportunity in the NHL. I, I, we are going to do a crossover with Jay from Locked On Ducks. We're finally going to, you know, and and Greg Cronin is now their head coach. He could be really like one of the names that you're saying, like this is what we're talking about. But it's very few and far between um, where where young, fresh voices get an opportunity in the league. It's just a recycling of head coaches right now. Yeah, uh, the fact that Mike Babcock still gets jobs, Man. like. It, it, <laughs> Yeah. Let, let's be honest like fresh ideas would be wonderful like jared bednar has completely changed the makeup of the colorado avalanche just by being a player's coach and listening and navigating like mm-hmm. instead of sitting there and kicking players and and wanting his way my way pucks in deep every coach it's pucks in deep we got quick shifts like come on yeah but bednar's changed the the avalanche just by the way he approaches the team and you're starting to see little bits of that, but you're also getting your Boudreaux's on every other job and Babcock's. And but isn't it the- amazing? Like, yeah, right. Jared Bednar, when he was hired, like he he coached at every other level, never coached at the NHL level yet. And the success that he has had, you would think a lot of other teams because all sports are copycat sports. Like, okay, how are they doing it? 
And look what the Avalanche did. They went and found him and got him and brought him in for his first job ever. And he's he's the winningest coach in franchise history. I, I, I'm shocked that more teams aren't taking that mentality and running with it. I love that the Avalanche didn't just bring in a John Tortorella who coached his 13th team. You know what I mean? It's just and you, it's crazy. And you know it's a problem every time a coach gets fired, Patrick Waugh's name still comes up. He hasn't coached in the league in – years but it's a name and you're like but it's patrick fresh faces fresh voices well, that worked for colorado uh, yeah I, and and i would say why hasn't patrick Wall gotten a, a job yet there's a, there has to be a reason behind it I, you know i know it was unceremonious how he left the avalanche but come on you mentioned mike babcock Mike Bab, if Mike Babcock can get a job again and and the minute that Joel Quinville is able to get a job he will have a job we all know what happened there in Chicago. He was fired midseason with Florida because of the Chicago stuff that came out. He's going to have a job guaranteed. But Patrick Wild can't get a job. And he, as far as a, a fresh voice in coaching, he still technically is that. He just had the one job in Colorado. It's crazy. It, I, it, I, I love that this one is last because it's, it's, it's so true. It's so true. I think the league needs – like bring bring some guys from the college ranks. You kidding me? Yeah. There's so many guys in, in the college rank that, that are those mastermind guys. Give them a shot. Give them a <laughs> shot. And you have such young players now that they can relate to. I don't know. Patrick Wall's innovation on the game was pulling the goalie with five minutes to go. It was. Nobody was doing that before he, he arrived. And it's something every single team does now. But nobody's looking at that saying, like, what else has he got in the tank? What else is he going to come up with? Nope, nobody's giving him a shot. It's mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. So um, fire away in the comments section. Want to hear on any and all of these, especially the Kale McCarr stuff in the beginning. Uh, give us a, a, a guesstimate what you think he's uh, going to be offered by the Avalanche or anybody else at that point in time. All right, going to wrap it up for today. Like I said, we will be back on Friday with a, uh, another – crossover friday crossover on our summer road trip and we're going to be meeting up with jay over at locked on ducks so that's going to wrap it up thank you for tuning in making it your first listen of the day always appreciate it he is mr shaggy von doom kyle sullivan i'm chris maselli this is the locked on avalanche podcast and we'll see you guys on friday